Hey, what's up guys? Bibo here bringing you the review of the MSI's most powerful gaming notebook right now, the GT83VR7RF Titan SLI, now with RGB keyboard. During the time of the review, I used this machine intensively as my daily workstation for the past few weeks. And boy, this machine is just a workhorse. Anything you put into it, it can handle it. From editing, multitasking, it's just a breeze. And uh, when it comes to workload, I edit 4K footages almost every day. And switching to a portable device from my day-to-day -day desktop is actually a big decision to make. Because I only use my laptop when I'm going on a meeting or doing some on-the-go editing. But replacing my desktop with this one is a different story. Imagine putting all my workflows in this piece of a machine, but since the GT83 VR is actually more powerful than my current desktop, uh, so uh, I gave it a try and here's my full experience. Before I proceed, the configuration I have here is powered by a Intel Core i7 Cable Lake 7820HK processor with dual NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 8GB of GDDR5 SLI. 18.4 inch Full HD IPS panel, 32 gig with 2133 DDR4 memory but still expandable up to 64 gigabytes. Storage uses the RAID 4 512 GB SSD uh, backed up with a 1TB 7200 RPM regular hard drive. Now in terms of the build and design, as what I said, it's not your average laptop slash notebook, it's more on a desktop grade laptop. I can say because its form factor is bulky, heavy, and yes, you need to have a large space on your table to fit this machine. The body is made out of a solid plastic build but the display part has this nice aluminum brush finish texture and if you notice, it's already using the redesigned logo of MSI plus it also lights up. Okay, for the ports on the right side, we got two USB 3.0 plus uh, this large exhaust vent. Then on the other side, we got the DVD drive, hi-fi audio headphone ports, card reader, and then additional three USB 3.0 ports, SPDIF port, and the headphone and microphone ports. Then at the back, we got the mini display port, Thunderbolt 3.1, HDMI 2.0, uh, DC for the adapter, the killer double shot gigabit network and the two additional nice looking large vents with red accent. And this machine uses a two gigantic adapter. Yep, these are brick adapters that you need to have but I just don't like the single cord implementation going to the machine. For me, it's just fragile and the thing here is for sure this will bend in the long run. Below we have the rubber pads, the Nahimic subwoofer and the exhaust grills. While inside, we can see a large portion of the components that can be upgraded but unfortunately, MSI didn't authorize me to open this unit so I won't be able to show you guys what's inside. But yep, the RAM and storage can be expanded. But as you can see here, it's using a Dyna Audio which is totally fantastic and I'll let you hear that guys later in this video. But what's new here is the RGB keyboard. It still uses the Seal Series keyboard with a Cherry MX keys, although it's not the most clicky sounding keyboard. The trackpad slash numpad is on the right side. Basically, the way it works is you need to press the numpad lock to use it as a numeric keypad. If that is disabled, it will act as a trackpad. Also, the left and right keys are located below. Although I didn't use this most of the time since I feel it's really flat and you're like pressing a virtual keys which is really hard. but. It's a great feature though, but I hope in the next version, maybe they can add a haptic feedback that will be great for the trackpad and the numeric keypad. For the keyboard, using the mechanical keys are very satisfying. Same as on the regular mechanical keyboards, but since the review unit I had didn't include the palm rest, I had a hard time pressing the lower part of the keys since they are near the edge. But that's just for me. But don't worry, they have included it in the package. So here's how the keyboard sounds when typing. The hinge is well made and solid plus the display has a thick panel with great viewing angles. Colors are accurate and bright also plus it can be adjusted using the MSI True Color. Although the panel is locked to 60Hz which I wish again they push it maybe around 120Hz since this is already on the super premium price point of any given laptop. Now the physical tour is out of the way, we now proceed to the performance which for sure you are all very curious. As usual, MSI included the exclusive softwares like the MSI Dragon Center where 
Uh, the heart of all the settings are here. Then the Steel Series Customizer where you can change the lighting effect of the keyboard. Then the Nahimic Audio Software, a exclusive audio equalizer that enhances the overall audio experience from gaming and overall surround sound. So here's how it sounds when it's activated. So far based also on what you've heard, I can say also this has the best and crispiest, loudest audio system I have heard on any laptop I have reviewed. Before we proceed with the benchmark, the settings I focus is the turbo and sports mode. But just to give you an idea with the different settings, there are actually four modes. The turbo, sports, comfort, and eco. The turbo mode is for overclocking and pushing the machine to its full potential, while the sports mode, it pushes the machine on its full potential on its factory default, which is 3.5 GHz clock speed for the CPU and 1.5 GHz clock speed for the GPU. While the comfort mode, you can boost the CPU but the GPU is locked to its default clock speed and you won't be able to ramp up to the boost mode which is the 1.7 GHz. And for the eco mode, it lowers the clock speed for both CPU and GPU performance to reduce the power consumption which gives the CPU a 1.5 GHz clock speed and also the 1.5 GHz clock speed for the GPU. Now for the 3D benchmark, I use the tuber mode clock at 4.2 GHz for the CPU and 1.7 GHz and can go up to 2.0 GHz boost mode for the GPU all throughout the test. And here are the results for the Fire Strike and Fire Strike Ultra. Also take note when on turbo mode, it automatically turns on the cooler booster to give a better stability and lower the temperature of the machine. Although since it's overclock, we still get a high temperature even the fan is turned on which is given for most overclocking feature. But do take note that the cooler booster sound is very very loud. What's great here is that it has more than enough room for the exhaust fan. That's why it can easily lower the temperature in just a few minutes. And the great thing here during our stress testing on overclock mode using the Unigine Heaven on window mode and while the cooler booster is turned on, we still got a decent temperature of not more than 90 degrees which gave us a stable system. Moving to the gaming for less demanding uh, titles like Dota 2 on turbo mode, we got more than 100 FPS on average. While for the Rise of the Tomb Raider, all maxed out, we got at least 80 FPS. And for the Intensive Witcher 3, all maxed out, uh, for a less detailed environment, we got at least 100 FPS. While on average, for a very detailed scene, it's around 80 FPS also. Overall, the gaming experience is way beyond what we expected for a gaming machine. Even the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test is all maxed out and we needed to use the Crystal Disk Benchmark to get the total read and write speed of the RAID 4 SSD. And boy, you see those numbers, let it speak for its own. While on the productive side, which is what I'm most into, is rendering 4K footages for 3 minute video with graphics and animation plus 4K footages with color correction, it only rendered the footage in about 5 minutes. which is insane and i think it's every on-site editor's dream machine all right for the gt83 vr 7rf titan sli so far this is the best machine that msi have ever released on paper check and even on real world usage absolutely check having the space for overclocking is a big advantage but i won't recommend using the turbo mode most of the time since the sports mode is more than enough or adequate for its performance at least you will still have that headroom. The setbacks are just uh, the 1080p display with 60Hz. It's just a bit disappointment but for most power users for sure, that is quite enough for the next few years. Two things it just needs improvement is the clunky, bulky brick adapter. Hope they find ways to organize this plus the implementation of the trackpad slash numpad. For me, it's just too way buggy and it's inaccurate. But MSI is still the pioneer with the mechanical keyboard execution for laptops. With that additional RGB LED light for sure, gamers and power users will love this feature. So overall performance for the GT83 VR, it's still absolutely a powerhouse machine. And from the time I used this as my day-to-day -day workload machine, I can say laptops are now gone to just being a laptop on your lap. They can now replace your desktop and can perform even better. Maybe most of us can't buy this yet for now, but in the next few years, for sure, there will be a machine that has the level of your desktop that will give you the luxury of bringing it anywhere. 
so that's about it for the review of the MSI GT83 VR7RF. I'm B-Boy, thanks for watching and see you on my next video.